Merry Christmas. All right, we're going to start all over again. Good morning. Merry Christmas. Now it sounds like I'm not the only one here. Uh, I have a few announcements I need to make, so please be uh, patient with me. Session meeting immediately following uh, morning worship service. Uh, if we cooperate, I think we can get in and get out in about 30 minutes or less. Might be the quickest session minute meeting in the history of the Owensboro Cumberland Presbyterian Church. How about that? And all the session members said yay. Okay, I had one session member listening. <laughs> Sarah said, I'm sorry, what did you say? Yeah, she couldn't hear me. She had her mask on. Uh, okay, Living Nativity tonight. I want to thank everybody who worked so hard with setup this week and, and presentation last night. What a great night for our first night of our 20th annual Living Nativity. It was a great night. No, I don't have a car count, but I can tell you that the... Uh, the Lines were consistent all night long, and uh, we had a great night sharing the story of Jesus' birth with, with our community and all who, who, who arrived. So tonight will be the second night of presentation. If you are in the first set, please be here and in costume and in place by 5.30. We, uh, we want to... Be here by 5.30, be in place before 6 o'clock, because we want to be sure to start on time. Um, clean up tomorrow morning. We're going to start at 8 o'clock. If you can be here to help, whether it's put up costumes or take down scenery or store away the lighting, uh, there is a job for anyone and everyone willing to help serve. And the more people we have, the quicker we can make that happen. So I encourage you to be here. Um, Really important Friday night, do not forget our Christmas Eve candlelight communion service. One of the, uh, I'll, I'll just tell you this, I was talking with Madden uh, this week, and Madden looks at me, 10 years old. Got to get this in your perspective, 10 years old. Madden looks at me and he said, Papa, he said, you know what my favorite part of Christmas is? singing carols by candlelight. A 10-year-old putting perspective on why we do Christmas Eve. If that doesn't serve as an invitation to have your family gathered in the house of the Lord on Christmas Eve as we celebrate our Savior's birth, I can't encourage you more than that. So there's your invitation. This morning, I want to thank you for all the beautiful poinsettias. You guys uh, always respond, and the house of the Lord is decorated and ready for Christmas. We will have uh, memorials in the bulletin next Sunday morning, and you'll be invited to take your poinsettias home after worship service next Sunday morning. Other announcements? If not, brothers and sisters... We gather because our Lord is worthy to be praised. I, I have an announcement here. Absolutely. Uh, real quick announcement. Manisa just wanted to say thank you to all the ladies of the church who helped take care of Phyllis this week. Uh, Manisa came home and Phyllis told her she needed to take more vacations because she had a real, real fun week. So that was great. Thank you all. That was just being church. So with that said, let us prepare our hearts, let us prepare our minds, and together, let us worship God, because our God is worthy of praise. Let us worship the Lord.
will take your bulletins, and for those who are able, I invite you to stand as we share together in our responsive reading this morning. The people that walked in darkness have seen a great light. For unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulders. And his name shall be called Wonderful. Counselor. The Mighty God. The Everlasting Father. The Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and of his peace there shall be no end. And the seal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Remain standing, if you will. And let us sing together, Silent Night. fussing at the children of Israel, then suddenly he says, you, this, this will be a sign unto you, a virgin shall give birth. Well, you know, people question that. And even Mary said, question it. Then Mary said, Mary unto the great angel, how shall, this be, how shall this be, seeing that I know not a man, nor I am a virgin? Dr. Luke, when he wrote, before he wrote his narrative, had interviewed a lot of people who were alive at the time Jesus was born. Uh, he was able to recognize death. It was easy. This was a struggle. Could a virgin conceive and bear a son? Uh, and Dr. Luke concluded with all the, all the information gathered that yes, this event did happen. And for this event, through the act of God, we have salvation through a little baby, Jesus Christ. Let us always, uh, when things go wrong or things bother us, let's, let's embrace this baby. Let's hold this baby and, and put him into our hearts and our actions. 
and then uh, thank him for his, his sacrifice. Dear Lord, we praise you. We bless your holy name. We ask you to forgive us of our sins. In the name of Jesus, whose blood was shed for our sins, we ask you now to uh, direct this church service to thy glory and thy glory alone. Let not one member of the choir have any fears of messing up. Let them all sing well and, and enjoy the song and the congregation also. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And you may be seated as the children come down to meet with Miss Gretchen for the lighting of the Advent wreath. All right. Come on down. Um, oh, I thought very my glasses and they were on. Okay, good morning. Ooh, seems like we're missing some people. Oh, I guess my big kids aren't coming. Hint, hint. <laughs> okay, you know what? This is so exciting. I love doing the Advent candles, and uh, I think it's so exciting. But today, I'm going to let you help me and you do the work, okay? All right, can I hear me? Okay, okay. All right, let me like, let's see. Who can turn up and do the first candle? What was the first candle? Yes. All right, now. Uh, Okay. All right, Charlie, you're going to do the honors of the first, the angel handle. Okay. So now let's see, what did the angel handle, what did, why did they do the angel first? Okay, yes, the angel, who did she tell? Mary, that she was going to have a baby. Yes. Okay. Right, then who can tell me what the next candle is? The, come on down. You know your stuff. Oh, you know how to take over my job. Good, good. Now, and what about the shepherds? Yes. Tell us all about it. What, what, did, what did they tell the shepherds? Okay, yeah. All right, good. You all are awesome. I'm going to have to give all of you 100%. All right, now, let's do what is the next candle. This. Lightning. Woo-hoo. All right, turn on and do the honors. The wise man. Great. Now. That leads us to the last one. So, let's see. We have the angel. We have the, sh the shepherds. We have the wise men. And, and then Mary. And you know what? Let me read. But, uh, today, in my Sunday school class, I was telling... Uh, Charlie and Ishmael and, uh, and Talia that Mary visited her cousin. And he, they said, you mean that Mary had, cousin, had a cousin? And I said, yes. And Mary's cousin was going to have a baby. 
and the nurse went to visit her, her uh, cousin, all of a sudden, her cousin felt her baby moved inside. And she said, oh my goodness, I am blessed by the Holy Spirit. And she was so excited. So, who would like to do the honors? Somebody that hadn't had a turn. Do you come up? I love all these handsome men. All right. And you know, the, the Mary candle is what color? See, I, he, now, he's doing good. He's just doing awesome. There you go. Oh, that is wonderful. So, look. How many candles have we done so far? Four. Four. Okay. So, the next one is what we've been waiting for. All all the, uh, all the season of Advent. So, I'm going to put this down. I want us to bow our heads and let's pray. To Father, during the season of Lent, we have hope and love and joy because we know that you brought Jesus to us to show us what love and hope and joy really is. Be with us as we go through our week. We ask in your name, amen. Okay, you may go back to your seats. As we celebrate this morning, there's nothing any better than celebrating a birthday, is there? Everybody likes to celebrate their birthday. And I think the reason for that is everybody feels special because it's their special day. Um, Gail and I celebrate the same day for our birthdays, our special day. But you know, when you're the recipient of celebrating that birthday, it's great. But there's nothing any better for a mother than to celebrate the birthday of each of her children. This morning, let us celebrate with the thought of Mary as we sing about the birthday of the king. If you will stand with me for the hymn of praise.
Good morning. Good morning. Merry Christmas. What a wonderful day that it will be. You know, I was thinking this morning, it's our last Christmas box. And there was a lot of things that kept going through my mind as to what to say or what to do. And listening to Doc back there, and I was watching Dr. David Jeremiah this morning, and he said, what if Jesus had not been born? ever thought about what if Jesus had not been born? We sure wouldn't need this, would we? We wouldn't know the first thing about it. And I started to think of just how lucky that we are, even with everything going on around us. And then I was watching Alan Jackson, pastor, and he said, with COVID, with the tornadoes, all of the disasters, the king is still the king. God is still in control. There is nothing that happens that he's not in control. And you know, when you think about that, we have a lot to be thankful for. And my challenge to you is that when this is done and put away, I think we should start another box that we can give God thanks of our blessings, of how blessed we are. You know, I'm standing here and I'm looking at Pam and I heard the good news this morning. That's worthy of a cross. That's worthy of a blessing. And I know that there's others out here this morning that whether you've put them, the crosses in here, how many of you all have had a prayer that has been answered within the past few days? Several. So no matter what happens, what's going on around us, God's still in control. And as long as we remember that, keep our eyes and faith on Him. No matter what's going on around you, just remember that God is still in control. Always has been and always will be. Will you pray with me? Our gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for this wonderful day that you have given us. Father, for another opportunity that we have to be in your house to worship you, but also for another opportunity for those who have never accepted you as their personal Savior. Father, we just continue to lift them up and pray for each and every one. I pray that if there is one troubled heart here this morning, that it be left with you. Father, I just pray that you will continue to be with each and every one that are not able to be here. To be with those who are still suffering the loss of loved ones. For those who are still affected by the tornado and the, uh, the storms. Father, we lift them to you and just pray for your healing hands to be placed upon them. That they may feel your comfort. That they may know that you are there with them. Father, we just pray that you will help us to love each other as you have loved us. And to show our Christian life to others. That they too may want it. For we ask all of these things in your wonderful name. Amen.
We just come to you this morning giving you the thanks for all the many blessings that you have provided to us as we provide as many blessings back to you as we can. In your name we pray. Amen. how many of the stories that we tell today begin, but to those living uh, in ancient Judea 2,000 years ago, the stories were usually about what was to come, not things that had already happened. For centuries, prophets had been predicting the coming of a Savior, Messiah, the Anointed One. A virgin shall conceive and bear a son. He will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. But when would this Savior come? Was the story nothing more than a myth, or a fairy tale, or maybe just a bedtime story? Then an angel came to earth to tell a young virgin named Mary that she would soon give birth to the Son of God. The excitement must have been overwhelming in heaven. 
Finally, this dream would be a reality. This prophecy would be fulfilled. The story of the ages would unfold. The angels in heaven were waiting their cue. They would be bearing the wonderful news. This very night a child would be born, the Savior Christ the Lord. The stars were aligning to light up the way. Angels descending in glorious display. This very night a child would be born, a Savior Christ the Lord. And it sings glory, glory to God in the highest. And it sings glory, glory to God in the highest. Heaven rejoices as earth receives her King. Watching in wonder the hand of God This very night a child would be born The Savior Christ the Lord Heaven sings glory, glory to God in the highest Heaven sings glory, glory to God in the highest Rejoices as earth receives her King. Heaven sings glory, glory to God in the highest. Glory to God. Now he is exalted to the highest place. The name he is given. born in a stable was truly God seemed somewhat ridiculous. But shepherds out in the fields had an angelic visit of their own. The angels told them the story. After that, they had no doubt that this child they would find lying in a manger in Bethlehem would indeed be the holy, infinite God. o'er all the earth you who sang creation story now proclaim messiah's birth come and worship come and worship worship christ the 
newborn King. Shepherds in the fields abiding, watching o'er your flocks by night. God with man is now residing, yonder shines the infant light. Come and worship, come and worship, worship Christ the newborn King. Emmanuel, Emmanuel, you are the God who saves us, worthy of all our praises. Welcome you here, Lord Jesus. Come and worship, worship Christ, the newborn King. God is with us even now, His love is here. Come and worship, worship Christ, the newborn King. His love is here, His love is here, Emmanuel, Emmanuel, you are the God who saves us, worthy of all our praises, Emmanuel. Welcome you here, Lord Jesus. Emmanuel, 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 Joseph, a carpenter from Nazareth, whose part in the story was unclear, even to him. Yet an angel visited Joseph to guide him and to reassure him that God had it all figured out. I'm sure he must have been surprised. At where this road had taken him Cause never in a million lives Would he have dreamed of Bethlehem And standing at the manger He saw with his own eyes The message of the Strange way 
thickens. Since news traveled so slowly in those days, God spread the word in another way. He hung a star that could be seen from far away. Astronomers from the Far East saw it and recognized it as a sign that the King of the Jews had been born. They watched, they followed, and when they finally found him, they worshipped him with gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh.
king held the world. One king held the purest gold. One king held the hope of the world. upon a time in a land far away. Yes, that's how many legends are passed how many legends are passed along. The story about the virgin birth, God's son being born in a stable, shepherds and wise men, it is not a legend or a parable, a fairy tale, a bedtime story. It's not fiction. It's true. All true. And personally, I can't hear it enough. A promise and a song A word too grand for any mind to hold A tax law and a journey A stable and some straw These tell the greatest story who sing glory in the highest? He is come, a great Messiah. Come down before this awesome mystery.
Even in true stories, everyone likes a happy ending, where all characters live happily ever after. But for that to happen in this story, there had to be a subplot, one that isn't as beautiful as the rest. It's a place where we become a part of the story. This is where we realize that our lives are far from perfect, that we have no standing with a perfect God, that is, unless someone changes the plot. Though God knew all along that this was part of the design, still his heart was broken when after 30 years since the magnificent scene in Bethlehem, it was time to sacrifice his precious son, Jesus, who would, sac who would suffer a painful, humiliating death God had laid upon his son of all our sins so we wouldn't have to carry them ourselves. But it's okay. God did it because of his love for us. It's not just about the manger where the baby lay. It's not all about the angels who sang for him that day. It's not all about the shepherds or the bright and shining star. It's not all about the wise men who traveled from afar. We could be born again. It's about the stone that was rolled away. So that you and I could have real life someday. It's about the cross. Not just about Trophies that I've won. It's not about the righteousness that I find within. It's all about His precious blood that saved me from my sin. It's about the cross. It's about my sin. Jesus came to be born once so that we could be born again. It's about the stone that was rolled away so that you and I could have real life someday. It's about the cross, the beginning of the story.
us are happily ever after. The sacrificed son did die, but on the third day, he rose from the dead. This story is still going on, and because of the resurrection, we know the ending. The theme is hope and peace and eternal salvation. So how can you enter the story? First, you must believe that it's true, and then, by faith, accept the invitation to come and lay down everything before the Lord. And then your everlasting life can begin. Then, go out and tell everybody you see the greatest story ever told. The shepherds on the hillside, there were angels in the sky. They said, boys, don't you be afraid, this is the night of your life. There's a baby in a manger that the whole world needs to know. It begins with you, here's what you must do. Go tell, go tell, go tell. Go to Once you see that shining star, you can keep, keep it to yourself. Go tell it near and far. He is Emmanuel. You gotta go tell. Go tell it to your sister. Go tell your brother too. Tell it to everybody you meet. Tell them you've got good news. Tell about the little baby born in Bethlehem. Tell him his name is Jesus and he's coming to free us. Go tell, go tell, go tell, go tell. Once you see that shining star, you can keep, keep it to in the fields abiding, watching 
watching o'er your flocks by night. God with man is now residing, yonder shines the infant light. Come and worship, come and worship, worship Christ the newborn King. Presbyterian Choir, our narrator Bill Stewart, our soloist Candy Lester, Addie Decker. Come on, stand up, girls. But most of all, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You may be seated. The fourth Sunday of Advent is the Sunday of celebration. Our choir has led us today as we have celebrated the story of Christmas. It's a beautiful story, the greatest story ever told. But it's not just about a baby laid in a manger. I woke up this morning and my verse for the day reminded us, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That's what it's all about. But why? Why? So that you can have everlasting life. 
So if God's Christmas present to you is the gift of his son, then it seems logical to me the only acceptable Christmas gift to God is the surrender of our hearts. The giving of ourselves to the purpose for which God created us. To love Him, to serve Him, to spend eternity with Him. If you're here this morning and you know that you know that you know that Jesus is your Lord and Savior, I'm going to invite you to sing with the choir as we sing our hymn of invitation. If there is a doubt in your mind, an uncertainty, this could be your day of salvation. As the choir sings, as the congregation joins in our hymn of invitation, I want to invite you to give your heart to Jesus, the most precious, the only Christmas gift I can imagine, worthy of the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Will you stand with us as the choir sings, whatever your need, this is your opportunity to come. It's not just about the manger where the baby lay. It's not all about the angels who sang for him that day. It's not all about the shepherds or the bright and shining star. It's not all about the wise men who traveled from afar. It's about how Jesus came to be born once so that we could be born again. It's about the stone that was rolled away so that you and I could have real life someday. It's about the cross. treasures or the trophies that I've won. It's not about the righteousness that I find within. It's all about His precious blood that saved me from my sin. It's about the cross. It's about my it's about how Jesus came to be born once so that we could be born again. It's about the stone that was rolled away so that you and I could have real life someday. It's about the cross. Celebrate. It's about the cross. It's about my sin. It's about how Jesus came to be born once so that we could be born again. 
It's about God's Son, nailed to a tree. It's about how every drop of blood that flowed from Him when it should have been me. It's about the stone that was rolled away. So that you and I could have real life someday. You and I could have real life someday. It's about the cross. Amen. Amen. I'm so thankful for each and every one of you here this morning, and I. I pray that you were blessed as the choir sang God's praises this morning as much as Ishmael. You were such a blessing with the cantata, Ishmael. Thank you. Uh, I don't know how many got it this morning, but Ishmael got it. So that was fun. That was fun. Hey, uh, session meeting immediately following in the session room. We will make it as quick as possible. Uh, if I could get a couple of guys under uh, Lorraine's instruction to put the pulpit back for Wednesday night worship before, I mean, for our Friday night worship before we leave, a couple of guys do a little lifting, that would be great. And Lorraine, you just instruct them what needs to be done. Just the pulpit. Everything's in place except the pulpit. We need that. Living Nativity presentation tonight. A uh, couple of prayer requests. Can I selfishly take a moment before we go to uh, tomorrow? Miss Clara will be moving, and so keep her lifted up. As uh, uh, what? What's the name? Cedarhurst. She'll be moving from one part place to Cedarhurst. Uh, many of you I know have been praying for Casey. Uh, uh, Casey's surgery has went really well, but. What a major surgery and still major recovery to, we're praying that we might get Casey home by Christmas. What a wonderful blessing that would be. And then for those who uh, uh, love and, and, and have been praying for Chuck and Nancy Schmiel, uh Chuck is still in ICU. Uh, we're getting some positive uh, reports, but uh, we've got a major hill to climb, so Keep lifting Chuck and Nancy up as uh, we go through this time together. Anyone else? Kroger, we need youth to show up to ring the bell for uh, Salvation Army 5 to 8 tomorrow. Anyone else? Oh, we have a new baby. Celebrate. What a blessing. Amen. Thank you for that, Deb. Anyone else? Anyone else? If not, acolytes, are you ready? We got a malfunction. The charge of the cantata simply is, you know the story. It's nothing new. We've been telling the same story for 2,000 years. The charge is simply, go tell. Wasn't it gift because he gave remind us we were the one sent to tell the story? Tell the story. Tell it in song. Tell it in word. Tell it in love. Tell it to all who will hear. Because salvation is worth the telling. Go in grace. Go in love. Go in peace. Merry Christmas to you all. Amen and amen.